So this is November 23, variant one. Paper two, that is. Which is a vector quantity. So let's choose. Is it density? No. Mass? No. Pressure? No. Weight? Yes. D. No. The graph shows the speed of a car traveling through a town. Which section of the graph represents the period when the car is decelerating? So in my head, this is a theory type. In my head, it was like, oh yeah, speed time graph decelerating. I want the line going down. What's the answer? D. Like, I'm not even looking at, hey, which choice is correct? I know what the answer is in my head first. An object reaches terminal velocity after being dropped and falling through the air. Which graph shows how the speed varies with time? Okay, okay, hold on. Reaches terminal velocity. Terminal velocity after falling through the air, usually, if I remember correctly, can be accelerate, acceleration decreases, constant speed. Uh, is this option available? Yes, it's C. On a zero. Okay. Four. The table shows the mass and volume of three different liquids, X, Y, and Z. The liquids are placed in the same container. The liquids do not mix. Which liquid is at the top? Which liquid is at the bottom? So I have to calculate the densities so I can arrange them. Uh, so density is mass over volume. And I work out 120 divided by 200. That's mass over volume. This is 0 0.6. 80 divided by 67, this is 1.2. Okay, 100 divided by 120, this is 0 0.83, so 0 0.8. So which one is the least dense? Clearly X, the liquid at the top is clearly A, X. Which one is the most dense? Clearly Y, so I'm looking for Y. So what's our correct answer? Yeah, X, Y, but A. This is a four to one question, if you realized. I have four choices. I pick these two, and then from these two, I pick one. Five. Which moving object has a resultant force acting on it? A diver rising vertically through water at a constant speed. So has a resultant force. This is important. I know in, if there is no resultant force, you move at constant speed. But if it has a resultant force, it will accelerate or it will decelerate. I don't know. Or it will change direction. I can tell it. Rising vertically at constant speed. No. Aircraft circling, circling. What do you mean is like a sky dive? This is a diver rising vertically through water. Where's the sky? He's trying to go up. Okay, circling an airport at constant speed. Constant speed, sure, but isn't he changing? Like, it's not similar to it, uh, not, not in that sense. Circling, isn't that changing direction? Yeah. That could be, this could be it. I'll say yes for now. A train going up in a straight line at constant speed, both are no. A parachutist descending vertically at terminal velocity, at constant speed, so also no. So it's the only one with a change in either speed or direction, B. This is one of those elimination questions. Yes, but I have to read all of them just in case. The forces are applied. To four identical objects. The length of each arrow indicates the magnitude of the force. Which object is in equilibrium? Hmm. Equilibrium and resultant force is zero. And I see all of the arrows the same length anyway. Or resultant moment is zero. Uh, first things first. This doesn't work because these aren't the same length. This won't work. Can you tell me why? Yeah, sure, they're the same length, but resultant force is zero. So why is it wrong? Can, I cannot say it's in equilibrium. Why? Because there's a moment, an anti-clockwise moment. I live for that, So no. A is actually correct. You mean at the shmeel, at the letaht, and they're all passing through the same point, but there's no moment. But I would say B. So let's look at A. At the letaht is correct. They cancel out. You mean we shmeel equal each other, but... Oh, they're also not passing through the same point. There's a pivot in the middle, but it's going to A, rotate, so no. So B is your answer. No. Seven. A sphere X collides head-on with an identical sphere Y. Okay, this is question seven, and he says collision, chances are, has that momentum, which is stationary. Uh, remember what I like to do. I like to draw. Why is D wrong? Are they the same length, Yorana? 
They're up and down, but are they equal in value? And no, that's it's okay. Yeah. Sphere X collides head on with a second identical sphere Y, which is stationary. Please, for the love of all that's good and holy, draw, sketch. It doesn't hurt. Yani Harsim Hina X moving and it's going to collide with Y. Stationary. Ma'ayal mass. I have the mass. Sphere X is traveling at a velocity of two meters per second before the collision and produces an impulse of 0.29 uh, 21 Newton seconds on sphere Y. What is the velocity of sphere X after the collision? What is impulse? Impulse any yani change in momentum. Impulse is simply another way of saying change in momentum. So, so after, I don't know what happens to X, but I do know that Y will move kid With a velocity of, I can get this. Because I already have the mass and velocity together. And I know the mass is 0.15. And I know the change in momentum is 0.21. Paoli. Yalla, let's work this out. 0.15 times V, mass times velocity equals 0.21, which means V is equal to uh, 0.15, sorry, 0.21 divided by 0.15. This gives me a velocity of 1.4. But I'm to the right, to the right of 1.4. You that came. Well, we can work this out. Al fikra, I didn't need to calculate this velocity. This I could have simply said total momentum before equals total momentum after. What's the total momentum before? mv 0.15 times 2 plus 0. Well, 0 0.15 times 2, 0.30 equals the marafush on mvx, m of 0 0.15 plus mass times velocity, which is 0 0.21. I know the velocity, but I don't need it right now. 0 0.21. What's vx? Well, the hydrogen is going to be minus 0.3 minus 0.21. You have 0 0.09 equals 0 0.15 Vx. You have the velocity of x. 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.15, which is equals 0 0.6. The sign did not change, so it's in the same direction. It's in the same direction, 0 0.6. Okay? Taban, taban. What you're saying is absolutely correct. Yeah, I see. You can say, oh, yeah, Mr. My impulse for on sphere X is the same. <coughs> Sorry. But you need to realize that impulse is change in momentum. So for X, there is a change in momentum. 0.15 times final velocity minus the momentum. Say, uh, Final velocity 0.5 times v minus the original speed, which is 2. You have to substitute it like this. Final minus initial equals 0.21. But it's only one. The 0.21d is on sphere y, not on sphere x. But here it's put the minus. This is why you got a negative sign, Yasin. I would rather not use this approach. I would rather use the approach that I'm used to. Total momentum before equals total momentum after. Total momentum before equals total momentum after. And the total momentum after is not 0 0.21. 0 0.21 is only the change in momentum of Y. That's it. Not X. You have two momentums. Okay? Sketch, draw, work it out, and it ends. Okay. A cyclist travels down a hill. We've seen this question 37 times before. A cyclist travels down a hill from rest at point X without pedaling. He applies his brakes and the cyclist stops at Y. Which energy transfers have taken place between X and Y? You obviously slow down, so you have gravitational potential energy, and you have kinetic energy, but then you apply your brakes, so this changes to heat. So gravitational to kinetic to heat, so 8A. Eight, eight. And nine, an object of mass M 
falls from a higher shelf to a lower shelf. How much gravitational tension energy does this object lose? Oh yeah, so that's MGH. Oh wait, which H? This H. Oh, I don't have this H. And only H1 minus H2. Because this is the big height minus the small height. This gives me this height. So is that option there? Yes. D. Yeah. A pump does <clears throat> 460,000 joules of work. You have work to fill a tank. It takes seven minutes to fill the tank. What's the power? We know the working. Power is work over time. So 4,460,000 divided by seven. This is in fashy minutes. So times 60. This gives us, because you have to convert it from minutes to seconds. It lost 1,095. Miss, I don't want that. It has been kilowatts, not watts. And on 1.095 kilowatts. Come on. It's two significant figures for 1.1 kilowatts. Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment. I'm going to take a sip of water. Because my throat is very dry. And then I say, Mr. Mr. We're making good time. So what about the bubble sheet? And you're like, oh yeah, mister, we do have a bubble sheet. What am I supposed to do in the exam when I have a bubble sheet like this? And here's where I have a couple of suggestions. You can either copy your questions one by one, like every single time you solve a question, you can copy it right away until you solve question one. So you have the bubble sheet on the side, you marked it as D, so I mark it as D, and then I go back. Okay, I solve question two, you finish question two, you mark it as D, and then you go back. That's one option. A second option is to copy each page when you're done. Yeah, so this is not a bad idea, Bardo. Each Page when you're done. Finish the page that one, two, three. So you're done with one, two, three. There's a D, D, C. So you go like D, D, C. And this is question three. A second option is to give yourself a fixed number of questions to stop and start copying. Maybe every five, because you want every five minutes to make sure you've copied. And then you go like, okay, Mister, this is D, D, C, and at home, like a four A. and 5b or you can do this every 10 questions which i personally like i like every 10 questions let's have it this gives me a chance to look at the time yeah this gives me a chance to look at the time when i'm just like when i said hang was like oh yeah i've reached question 10 huh i do it a day if it's 10 minutes you're barely making good time i don't know i was like yeah if it's less than if it's less than 10 minutes, you're awesome. Well, actually, that's what I recommend. You should take less than 10 minutes, less than one minute per question. If it's more than 10 minutes, uh, I need to hurry. Solve the rest faster. Copy faster. Because the worst feeling in the world, in Naktigi ala akhir al exam, you have two minutes left and you're still solving question 39 and then you realize, <gasps> answer all of my work all of this work and it's not just the work you've been doing for the past 43 minutes it's the work you've been doing for the past nine months part of solving an exam is strategy so strategize strategize how to approach your questions strategize how to approach the exam strategize how you're going to copy your answers and give it a shot. Habat, look a copy for the MND if you want to print it at home and, and like try to practice in, in copying Amal Z. All right? I'll send you a, a blank copy. Trust me. It, uh, 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 Asaf, you know this, yeah, Ahmed. Asaf, it's heartbreaking. It's heart wrenching. And one of the biggest, most disgusting mistakes that happens during copying is this Question five is B. Question six is B. Question seven is B. Question eight is A. 
question nine is D. Do you see a problem? Do you see what happened? Oh. And the moment that happens, like question 10, it got a bit for question 11. Question 11, it got a bit for question 12. And then you realize, or maybe you don't, and all of the questions got shifted. Or maybe you do fill this in as D. When you fill it in twice, you go like, oh yeah, the D. Okay, oh, la, 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 the A. And then everything goes to hell. And this has happened before. I'm not speaking out of my rear end. Anna. This has happened before to students in different subjects. And they'd come crying. Mister, I the first three questions are fine. And then I didn't realize. And then I wrote three B and D. Or I wrote like two answers because he copied question four's answer back in three. And then everything was shifted. Which is why I personally like the A. The every five question or every 10 question thing. La, don't just wait for the last five minutes. Every five or every 10 questions, stop and check. Did you copy those questions and in their correct numbers? It's not just, oh yeah, B, C, C, B, D, 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 no. 10, did I copy 10 at A? Yes. And this is what you need to revise in paper two. Not, did I answer the questions correctly? They will, yeah, Malik, but here's the terror. In the, by the time you realize this, and time is going to run out, and you start erasing, and then pens down, and then you have like three quarters of that answer sheet erased. Only a quarter of your answers are copied down, and then you've lost everything. So, yeah. It's a very sad story. It makes me cry when, when that happens. Be careful. Plan min del wati how you're approaching the questions. Plan from now how to approach the questions, how to copy, how to make sure you don't make the silliest mistake of your life. Let's continue. The water in a swimming pool exerts, a pr exerts pressure at the bottom of the pool. Which graph shows the relationship between the pressure exerted by the water and the depth of the water? So pressure and depth. Oh, I know the equation. Pressure is rho g h. But I know that pressure and depth are directly proportional. So it's C. Because C is the only one that's directly proportional. It's a straight line. 12. Why can a gas be compressed easily into a smaller volume? I know because the molecules are far apart mentally in my head. That's what I know. So I'll read the rest just in case. They do not attract each other. No, they move randomly. This is physically correct. Okay. This, I'm not saying this is physically wrong. This is physically correct. But it does not uh, support the why is it easily compressible. Like that doesn't, that doesn't help that statement. The volume of each particle can be reduced. This is physically incorrect, so A is the correct answer. 13. A gas is contained in a cylinder by a movable piston. The gas is heated, so it expands at constant pressure. So you've heated the gas, it expands. Temperature increases, volume increases, because the molecules probably move faster and farther apart. But how is the force of each collision of a gas particle with the piston affected? And how does the frequency of the collisions between the particles and the piston change. You've heated it, so the force will A will increase for sure. So I know it's either A or B. But because it's allowed to expand, the frequency of the collisions decreases. So I know it's A. Because it decreases. Next. 14. On a warm day, a carton of fresh milk is covered with a wet cloth. Probably it's going to evaporate. Why does this help reduce the temperature of the milk? Because probably the water in the cloth evaporates. Some water evaporates from the cloth, so the remaining water becomes cooler. I mean, isn't that correct? It is. I'll read the rest just in case. Water has a high heat capacity. No. Water insulates the milk from the warm air around it. No. Water is always colder than the air around it. Who said so? Like, no. A chef heats some water in a pan on a hot plate. 
The temperature of the water rises by 10 degrees Celsius in a time t. She then puts the same volume of oil on an identical pan on the same hot plate. The specific heat capacity of the water is 2.5 times that of oil and 1.1 times denser than the oil. What is the time for the temperature to rise by 10 degrees? Now, this looks confusing, but hold on for a second. We know that E equals MC delta T. He mentioned specific heat capacity. So let's read this again. This, this looks confusing. The temperature of the water rises by 10 degrees Celsius and a time T. What's the relationship between time and all of this? Oh, yeah. Energy is power times time. So I can replace energy with power times time equals MC delta T. But she then puts, this is for water. She then puts the same volume of oil in an identical pan on the same hot plate. And she wants to find out what happens at the time. So make time the subject. Time equals MC delta T over the power. So what has happened to the individual things? Same volume of oil in an identical pan. Wait, is same volume, any same mass? That's a very important question. This, this is the, I would say this is a star question, like a hard question. Is volume, same volume, same mass? No, we know the density is mass over volume. So mass is density times volume. Why is that important? Sure, it's the same volume. But later on he says, and water is 1.1 times denser, which means oil, is 1.1 times less dense. Do you get the idea? Faye says, the specific heat capacity of water is 2.5 times that of the oil. So the oil is 2.5 times less capacity. And the water is 1.1 times more dense than the oil. So the oil is 1.1 times less dense. What is the time for the water to rise, the same change in temperature, 10 degrees? So this doesn't matter. And the power doesn't matter. All right? What matters is the A, because he is using the same hot plate on the same hot plate. So it's M and C. I know that the mass of the oil will be what? More or less? How would you guys think? The mass of the oil, will it be more or less? Less. Less by how much? By 2 point, uh, sorry, by 1.1 times. Will be less by 1.1 times. So I can replace M with M over 1.1. It decreases by 1.1. And what about the capacity? Is it more or less? It's less. Less by how much? By 2.5 times. So wait, so you mean to tell me that the time will now be less by 1.1 times and by, by 2.5 times? I would say, yeah, it's less by both. But how do I work this out? Well, MLO with 1 over and MC over 1.1 times 2.5. I calculate that you do this by saying 1 over 1.1 times 2.5. We should fight Lali Cam. I hit Lali 0 0.363636 MC. So what's the answer? 0.36. Is this a hard question? Is this a start question? Absolutely. So, because this is a calculation question and a theory question at the same time with annoying ratios. So yeah, this is worth the extra time. It's hard. Chefs know this intuitively. That's good time management, yeah, Ahmed 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 says, uh, I would honestly just leave it. I wouldn't leave it 100% because here's my problem with just leaving multiple choice questions. 
if you're not careful, you might do the whole, uh, oops, I accidentally shifted my answers in the bubble sheet mistake. But if you know what you're doing and you mark it, right? And you're careful when you're copying, that's fine. So that you go back to it and you can A, solve it. If you already have time problems, honestly, you should at home, at home, a single paper, two question paper <clears throat> should take you 30 minutes, sometimes less. If you cannot hit the 30 minute mark at home, yes, you have time problems. Practice a lot. The diagram shows the view of a room heated by a radiator. The arrowed line from X to Y is the path of the convection current in the air. Which row about the air temperature and the air density at X and Y is correct? Hmm. Uh, so we know that temperature of the air at X and at Y. Huh. Hot air goes up, then cold air goes down. So we know that the temperature at X is higher than Y. So it's higher at X. And then the air density is higher. How are we all higher? Higher at mean, higher at Y, because Y is going down. It's more dense. But B is your correct answer. Two men, P and Q, stand close to a gap in a wall as shown. The man, P, cannot see a man, Q, but man, P, can hear the man speak. خلاص, I see the word gap. waves. I see the word gap. I see the man can hear. Diffraction. The sound eh, diffracts. And it, it goes this way, and then it can spread past the edge or the wall. But can the light spread? No, it doesn't. Why? Not because light doesn't spread. لا. It's because light, عموماً, عموماً, in general, light has very small eh, wavelengths. For a gap like this is huge. So will the light spread a lot? Call us. But the sound has a very large wavelength. This gap is small. So can the sound spread a lot through the gap? The light will not spread. The light will come straight. So will the sound spread? Absolutely. But which statement explains this? Light waves do not diffract at all because the electromagnetic waves are physically incorrect. Light waves have a range of frequency, but sound has one frequency. Does this explain lay? Why does it spread? No. no. Sound waves are of higher frequency than light waves. Uh, what? No. In a prism that's called dispersion you have seen, and it's a subset of refraction. It has nothing to do with diffraction. Sound waves diffract a lot because their wavelength is similar to the width of the gap? Yes. Sound waves diffract. That's why you can hear they spread out. That's why you can hear. That's okay, I say. That's good. Oh, Nick. Okay. Which quantities relating to a wave on the surface of water can both be measured in meters? So we're looking for meters. I, uh, probably amplitude and wavelength. That's for example. Amplitude, yes. Frequency, no. Amplitude, yes. Wavelength, yes. That's it, B. Diagram shows part of a ray diagram that demonstrates the formation of a virtual image by a converging lens. How is amplitude measured? I don't know. What was amplitude? This is amplitude. It's literally the height of a wave. So how do you measure height? Like from the center, how do you measure height? With a ruler, which means you can measure it in centimeters, millimeters, meters. Surface of water. Mr. Tablight or sound. He said water. Okay. Uh, one ray from X is shown. Which row arrow shows the direction of this ray as it leaves the lens? Obviously, obviously, obviously. If I draw this properly, it will look like this. Like this is the direction of this ray. 
So which is the correct answer? A, no question. A ray of light is reflected by a plane mirror, which shows the angle of instance and the angle of reflection. Clearly, this is angle of instance and this is angle of reflection. So I'm looking for Q and R. So Q, that's C, and therefore R. So 20C. 21, a thin converging lens is used to produce a real image of an object. Which statement about the real image is correct? It is nearer to the lens than the object. Always? Is this, is this always correct? Yeah, it's, it's far side, it's close. It's not always correct. It is on the opposite side of the lens to the object. Yani if this is the object, the image must be this way, here, on the other side. Yes. Because virtual is on the same side. Real image is always on the other side. It's the same size of the object. Like it could be large, could be small. It's upright. Like it's always inverted. Real image is always inverted. So B is our correct answer. A radio transmitter broadcasts a frequency of 200 kilohertz. What is the wavelength of these radio waves? Now, this assumes that you remember the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. You have to remember that. So what's... V equals F lambda. So what's lambda? V over F. Yeah, 3 times 10 power 8 divided by 200,000 equals kilohertz. I get 1,500 meters. So what's our answer? C, 1.5 times 10 power 3. Next. The element mercury exists as a solid or liquid or a gas. Which row gives a possible set of values of the speeds of sound through mercury? Speed of sound in frozen mercury, uh, in liquid mercury, and vapor. I know before I start that in solid, the speed is the highest. In gases, the speed is the lowest. So, in liquids, speed is nos nos. So I'm looking for the highest, medium, and then low. So D is the only correct answer because this is the only one. In, in this order, it's decreasing. Speed of sound in gases is less than the speed of sound in liquids is less than the speed of sound in salt. You know when you talk too much and too fast, I can't breathe properly? So. And then next one is simple. Which metal could be used for a permanent magnet and which metal could be used for the core of an electromagnet? So clearly we know that permanent magnet is steel. Electromagnet uses iron, so the answer is D. Which statement describes the direction of electric field at a point? An electric field at a point is the direction of the force or of a force on a positive particle in that field or on a positive charge. A definition that I remember, memorized. So the direction of the force on a negative, no, north, no, positive, yes. Which statement about a voltmeter is correct? Uh, it has a scale marked in amperes, no, in series, no, measures potential difference, yes, that's voltage. It has three terminals, no, so see. A wire has a resistance of 8 ohms. A second wire of the same material has twice the length. And twice the area. What is the resistance of the second wire? Uh, twice the length, you by eight times two, you by 16. Twice the area, and you have some resistance. What's going to happen to resistance? It'll decrease. So 16 divided by two gives me a eight. So what's the resistance? Eight and B. Same as together. A plastic rod is rubbed with a cloth. The rod becomes positive. If the rod becomes positive, it has lost electrons. Which row gives the name of these charged particles? Electrons, so it's either A or B. What's the direction in which they move? From cloth to the rod or rod to the cloth? We said the rod has lost electrons, so rod to the cloth, so B. 29. An AC supply is connected to a diode and a resistor in series. Which graph shows the potential difference across the resistor varies with time? This is something we've memorized before. If you only have one diode, 
you've rectified it only halfway. So only half the AC supply goes through. So I'm just looking for a jump and constant, a jump and constant. Okay. And if you don't remember, what would this be? This is if you have four diodes. Remember the bridge? All right. So this is if you have a bridge. Rectified is another way of saying corrected. So you've changed this from AC to DC and you've corrected it from AC to DC. A uh, diagram shows a circuit used to switch a heater on when the temperature drops below a certain value. So, oh, wait a sec. I see two of them in a relay. So this is probably you know, two resistors in series. One of them has to be what? He said when temperature drops, one of them has to be a thermistor for sure. Because it has to be sensitive to temperature. Which row shows the components that should be connected to X and Y? One of them is a thermistor. The other has to be fixed. So that the ratio between them is fixed. We want the temperature when it decreases, we want this to turn off, which means when the temperature decreases, we want the voltage here to decrease. Uh, or switch on a heater, actually, sorry, we need the voltage to increase. So again, when the temperature decreases, we want the voltage across the switch, so across the relay to increase. So the relay works, which means we want the resistance here to increase. So where do we put the thermistor? At X or Y? Ah, temperature decreases means the resistance of the thermistor will increase. Ah, wait, where, where do I want the higher resistance? At what? At Y. Not X. Think of it this way. If the temperature increases, the resistance of Y, uh, sorry, if the temperature decreases, the resistance of Y will increase, which means the voltage across Y will increase because they are in series and the voltage is split according to the ratio of the resistors. The resistor in Akbar, we have voltage Akhtar. Our resistance gets more voltage. So we want this to get more voltage so that the relay would turn on, it would close the switch, it would turn on your heater, and that's it. Okay, so X should be the fixed resistor, so A or B. Y should be the thermistor, so B. A current in a solenoid produces a uniform magnetic field inside the solenoid. The magnetic field direction is due east. Which change will produce a stronger magnetic field with a direction due west? So you want a stronger field. And this is a solenoid. Hmm. So you want a smaller or larger current? Because that's what my eyes see. Smaller current or larger current? L larger current. Why? Because you want a stronger field. So it's either C or D. Then, do you reverse the current or turn the solenoid 90 degrees? Oh, we like the magnetic field is due east. Yeah, what does he mean? Now he wants it due west. What does he yeah, he wants to completely flip it over. So what do I reverse? The current. D. Exactly. Sahiran. D. Because do you know what 90 degree means? If this was, let's say, north and... Uh, sorry. If this was the north and south, because that's what he said. 90 degrees means you held it like this. So north or that south. So the field is now going upwards. Or maybe downwards. That's 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. Reversing the current will completely flip over the north and south. And that's what I want. You know what would work? But so the first part of the uh, sentence is wrong. Turning the solenoid through 180. Like if you literally physically turn the coil 180 degrees. That's fine. But he said using a smaller current. So that's not fine for the first half of my answer. A metal rod PQ rests on two horizontal metal wires that are attached to a battery. The rod lies between the poles of a magnet. When the switch is closed, the rod moves to the right. What could be changed so that the rod moves to the left? What could be changed so that the rod moves to the left? Well, I can use Fleming's left hand rule if I want to, but I think I can just use logic here. If right now this moves to the right, 
and I want it to move to the left. I have two options, reverse the battery. So this is positive and this is negative or reverse the poles of the magnet. These are my two options. If I just want to reverse it. So open the switch, uh, no. Reverse the battery and exchange the poles, both of them at the same time. No, it's either one of them. So reverse the battery, but without exchanging the poles. I mean, that works. Turn the metal rod around, the metal doesn't do anything. Metal the galbain. Metal the just gets the current passing through it and moves. So no. A transformer in a computer is used to transform 240 volts from the main supply to 12. The number of turns on the secondary is 2000. Which statement of the transformer is correct? So uh, clearly this is a step down transformer because you want to change 240 to 12. But if the turns here is 2000, then what are the turns here? More than 2000 for sure. So this is a step up or down it's a step A down transform voltage decreases. And it has 100 turns on the primary or 40,000. I don't even need to calculate. It has more turns. Like he literally gave me two options, the smaller number or the higher number for the primary coil NP higher. In alpha particles capturing, alpha particles are instant on thin metal foil. Which row describes the results from the experiment and a conclusion it leads to? Let's see the results. <clears throat> Most of the alpha particles pass through the foil. And that works. Most of the alpha particles pass straight through the foil. That works, Bardo. A very few pass through the foil. No. So it's either A or B. Is it okay to draw henna? Absolutely. Why? You can draw and do anything you want in this question paper, because if you haven't noticed, this paper doesn't even have space for your name. Right? This paper has space for your name. Doesn't even have that. And his, uh, you, you do write it anyways, but this doesn't have any. Any rough working should be done on this question paper. That's literally part of your instructions because your answers are all corrected here and your answers are all connected using OCR or like uh, you know, optical character recognition or like the other term. I forgot what the other term is. You guys study ICT and CS more than I do. So yeah. The important thing is your answer sheet should be nice and clean and organized. You can scribble all you want here. Oh, OMR, thank you. Yeah. Is it OMR? Yeah, OMR, optical mark recognition, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's continue. The nucleus, most of the atom is empty space. The nucleus is very large. Uh, this is physically incorrect. This is correct. So 34A. 35, alpha, beta, and gamma are emitted by radioactive nuclei when they decay, which emissions can be deflected by an electric field? So gamma isn't, these two are. So alpha, beta. He didn't even ask for the direction, just saying who's deflected. Radioactive isotope X decays into a stable isotope Y. The graph shows how the mass of Y present with the sample varies. He's not looking at the mass of the thing that's decaying. He's looking at the mass of the stable isotope after. So which time interval gives the half-life of X? Ah, which gives you the half-life of X? T2, that's it. If your start was nothing and then you have double your mass, like, Half the mass. And then, what's the time back here? That's it. That's T2. Because this is the inverse of the graph for X. X, which is the thing that is decaying, this is a, I would say this is a star question. 
I would say this is star fashion. X, that is the king, started off at 100%. Let's call this M. All right? And put back on Haga. This is all one object. This was X. And after a certain time, you've lost half of X at a certain time. If half of X is lost and it turns to Y, can you draw a graph for the change of mass of Y? Again, look at Y, look at Y. You need to remember that X is currently decaying. Yes, yeah. La ma fish background. Because he's talking about the mass of the sample. La stanna yasin. That's incorrect. It's not about the doubling, wukalas. I'm not looking at the doubling. I'm looking at right now. Mass of X was M and it dropped to half M. So the mass of Y was zero and it increased to what half M. Because look at this, look at the next decay. If you look for the next decay, and I'm not going to call it T3, let's say this is one hour. At the two hour mark, you're not going to have half M, you're going to have a quarter M, right? Half of the half is quarter. So how much mass are you going to have for Y at the two hour mark? Not double. It's it'll increase by half because the x decreases by half. So it's going to be what? Add another quarter. So it's three quarters. So it's not going to be doubled. Don't look at this and say, oh yeah, this will double. No, no, it won't. Because less mass to decay the second time. Yes, there is less mass to decay the second time. So there is less mass to increase by Y the second time. It's not going to increase more. It's going to increase. And if this is the half-life, if T2 really is the half-life, look at this time. Copy it here. This much is half of this, which is correct. Same Wait the same amount of time. This much is half of this. Wait the same amount of time. This much is half of this. It will increase at a decreasing rate. Why? Because X is decreasing with a decreasing rate. Whatever was X is turning to Y. This is what you need to understand. And imagine this. Here is X. After one half-life, here is X, here is Y. After one more half-life, here is X, here is Y. After one more half-life, here is x, here is y. Did it just double you know, from zero to half? Did it double that from half to like 100%? No. It'll never reach 100%. It'll reach this at an infinite time. You don't know what this is. Are you saying T3 minus T2 is incorrect? It's just T2. Because what I'm thinking of isn't y. What I'm thinking of is x, that actually is decaying. If X started at mass M and it waited for one half life, it'll be half M. And then it'll be a quarter M. And then it'll just keep going down. And if X decreases by half, Y will increase by that much. By the same amount of mass. Because look at what mass M is. This is the mass of Y. So... This mass of y, it's m over 2, which was the mass of x. I hope you understand this. Because you have to look, think of x, not just think of y. You have to think of x, because we have studied what happens to the thing that has decayed. It decreases by half, and the amount of mass of that unstable isotope has now turned into the stable isotope. So the stable isotope increases by the same amount of mass, if you're talking about mass. Yeah. 37. Which particle is absorbed by a nucleus to call nuclear fission a neutron? 
Okay, now I feel uranium plus neutron breaks it apart. So this is just memorization. 38, it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere in June. Which statement explains this? Le. Hmm, what do you think? Earth is closer to the sun? What? No. Everything would be super hot for Haladi. The Earth spins on its axis in the opposite direction when it... How does spinning in the opposite direction even affect any of this stuff? No. The moon is full in June. Wallahi, that's why the summer is hot. North pole of the axis is tilted towards the sun. Yes. And the south pole is tilted away from the sun. So... The North Pole gets longer daylight hours, so it gets hotter. The south Pole gets less daylight hours, so it gets colder. Or you can think of the energy diffracting a little bit more, and you've got less intense light hitting the southern hemisphere. Okay, so D. 39. Which statement of the sun is correct? The sun is a dwarf star. No. Sun is a giant star. No. The sun is a medium star. Yes. Because when he says the sun, it means our sun. That's why it's capital S. It's the name of the sun, right? Consists of hydrogen, helium, or nitrogen, oxygen. Yeah, hydrogen, helium, for sure. So 39C. The table lists some information about stars. Which star will eventually explode as a supernova? Which one will explode? Uh, I, I don't know names. Of, I don't know names of stars. So I don't know names of stars. But what I do know is that a star that explodes into a supernova is a red super giant. A red giant doesn't explode. A red giant just turns into a planetary nebula with a white dwarf in the middle. A red super giant, we explode, we pull out interstellar nebulas for all the and it leaves behind a black hole. So red. Uh, what I'm looking for is the word a red super giant. None of these other things matter to me. What am I looking for? What have we studied? Oh yeah, the names of a the process, like the life cycle of a star. So B. And that's November 23.